Hi, I'm Nathaniel, CEO at Pickaxe, and today I'd like to take you through a more detailed review of how to build and deploy actions. We're going to call this Advanced Actions Building in Pickaxe. And before I get into it, I just want to mention that this reflects the current state of how to build actions and the current best practice about what to do for today. We're always trying to make this process better, and we may make different decisions in the future about how to do certain things, but this will help anybody that's making actions now and for the next couple of months to be able to understand the system that we've built and, and build their own awesome actions that can do all kinds of different amazing things. Um, another thing to note is that the in order to build an action, uh, you should be either proficient in Python, or you should be ready to do a lot of trial and error back and forth with ChatGPT in order to get this um, working the way you want it to. Um, so now that that's understood, let's take a look at the actions uh, experience. So we can always build an action uh, right here. And on the left here, the action details, and on the right, the action code. Now I'm just going to give an explanation of what each of these boxes on the left mean in detail. Um, so here goes. So the first thing to understand is there's a name of the action. Now this can have you know, lots of different um, possible, you know, you can put spaces, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, this is the name that people will see. The AI will see a version of this name that has underscores um, put into it. Um, the AI will see the version that is over here. So if you're referencing this action in your prompt, you should use this um, string to reference it. So you should say, you know, don't forget to use the send underscore summary underscore email to owner action. Um, so the name is important. The name and the description go into the AI's understanding of what this action is. And so if you write a good descriptive name and a good descriptive description, it will help the AI to know what this action is supposed to do and when to call it. Now the trigger prompt is a little bit different. The trigger prompt is injected into your role. Actually, after all the stuff that you currently put in there, we don't show it to you but we inject basically um, another you know, couple of lines that says, hey, these are the actions, here are the name of the actions, and here's when this user wants them to be called. And the real reason behind that is because we have noticed that these things work a lot better if you talk about them in the prompt, and most people forget, um, and it's difficult for us to explain that you should talk about them in the prompt. But all of this being said, you can put some good information about when to call the action in the trigger prompt, but you can also use this name in your prompt at various different places to influence when you want the action to be called, under what conditions, all this stuff. Now, another thing that I will mention is that you can only call one action at a time in our current system, but sometimes the models can get confused and will try to call more than one action at the same time. Our system will just take whatever the first one those models call is and drop the rest. And so let's say that you want to generate a picture and then remove the background image, or remove the background of the image. What you're going to want to do is be very clear in the prompt that this is a two-step operation where the user will first generate a picture and then in another query, they will ask for that background to be removed. And you need to be clear with your users that they should do that and expect to use the tool like that. Eventually, coming soon, we will allow you to string actions together to make amazing combinations of, of functionality that we can't even really dream of. But right now, we're still working out the basics of getting the actions to work well. And uh, so uh, it's important for you to be aware that it's one uh, action uh, at a time uh, and that the AI models might even not always know that but you have to know that as you're designing systems that use these actions. Um, so I've explained the name and the description 
and I've explained a little bit how we use the trigger prompt. Uh, let's look at the function inputs. So you put in what you want to get passed to your code here. So in this case, we might put name and we might put email. And the description is very important. Um, both the description and the name go to the AI and help the AI understand how to fill in these boxes. This is basically like a Mad Lib for the AI where the AI is, is, uh, is, 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 is taking a look at your whole conversation that you've had if this is a chat or everything that you've done if this is a form and they are saying, how can I best fill in these boxes and make a call to do these things? Now, finally, we we get to, and, and you should do this first, uh, always, name and description and, and the name of the function inputs and the trigger prompt, because uh, these, we're going to be pre-writing parts of the code in here to structure it, to make it extra easy for you to get in there. Now, uh, the environment variables, you probably don't have to worry about for your application. You can use them. Um, they're primarily for us. Um, so that we can make certain actions public, but you probably don't have to worry about making your actions public. Um, so you should just know that your code is secure and that if you put API keys directly in that in your code in a string, we're not gonna show it to anybody, it's not going out on GitHub, and so it's perfectly secure to put those secure pieces of information there. Though if you want an extra layer of security, you can add it as an environment variable. Each time you make a connection with your action, um, let's say you build an action and then you want to connect it to pickaxe A, pickaxe B, pickaxe C, it will ask you to put in new environment variables for each of those connections. And so one way that you might want to use environment variables is if something will be slightly different with your action when it's connected to pickaxe A versus pickaxe B versus pickaxe C. Uh, so you can use them for that, but you, you shouldn't really need to use them now this final thing is the Python packages. And this is new, actually. We've recently added this. This allows you to add different Python packages that you want your action to be able to use. This really blows up the, um, the amount of stuff that you can do. If you know about Python, then you know what I'm talking about. If you are new to Python, the important thing for you to understand is that if ChatGPT tells you to paste some code in. It will also probably tell you to install some uh, libraries, some modules, and some packages. And uh, the way that it will probably do that is by telling you to pip install x and pip install y. It'll, it'll talk about this pip thing. What you're going to want to do is put the name of the package in here and click the plus button. And that is like saying telling us that when we run the code, we should pip install all this cool stuff. So this is a super powerful system because any package that's been built in the entire Python universe, you can go ahead and install it and we're running it in a secure environment. So um, you can do really amazing and awesome stuff. So now we can talk a little bit about the code side and I just wanna go over some high level limitations where we're at now. This is probably the meat of the video as far as important stuff that maybe we haven't disclosed thus far, probably because we're, we're just so busy here at Pickaxe. Um, and we're trying to disclose some of it in these comments if you read through them, but I'm gonna just explain it verbally um, and, and some of the intricacies. So the, the very first thing to understand is um, uh, whatever code you write here, it has two minutes to run. If it takes more than two minutes, we're gonna shut it down. Uh, that's just a limitation we currently have. Most of them should take way less than two minutes, but just important to understand. Uh, as far as getting input in, we can only take text input. I'd also like to mention that uh, you cannot delete this stuff because it's being set on the other page. So if, if you're confused about be, not being able to delete the stuff that's up here, um, it's being set on the other page, so that's why. And how do you get output from these awesome pickaxe actions? Well, there's basically three ways to do it. 
two ways with text. If you return a string like hello, this, uh, this will go to the model. The model will see it. If you print a string like hello, the model will see it. If you print and then you return, the model will see both. So that's great. Just be printing stuff out uh, t and, and you can even inform how you want it to behave because it's gonna take this information and go into another generation. So you can say, for example, uh, you know, this next info I give you, um, you know, uh, format it in bullet points. And at the end, and then maybe let's say that I, I, I said, you know, print uh, some sort of a, a list. Now it, it will print me a list of all of these numbers and bullet points, right? So, so we can even give instructions right there in the pr print area. Um, now, the, now the final way to uh, get stuff out of here is if you want to get a file out. A file is like an image or a CSV, JPEG, PDF, HTML file. I think the ones we support are right here. Now you have to save that within the code to the local directory of the code. So you really just have to save it. Any file of these formats that we see, we're going to scrape it out of this temporary area where this stuff is running. And we're going to um, put it in a place where the user will be able to have access to it. Um, and we're going to show it and, and you, you know, it'll, it should show it to the user. Um, it will prompt inject telling it what the link of it is and, and say like, Hey, here's this thing, you know, go for it. Um, and so, so, so those are the three ways to get information out. You can get text out by either returning it or printing it and you can get files out by saving the files to the local environment. Okay. I'd like to briefly just talk about, um, cloning existing actions, uh, which is important can be very helpful to get you started. One action that I happen to know is, is particularly complicated is this mid-journey images action. We've integrated with this mid-journey um, API called user API, which is supposed, they're kind of a different service that integrates with mid-journey on the back end. And their API is a little bit complicated. So if I click the clone button, I guess I have to enter, you know, you can just enter something random in here. It's not gonna matter. Can go ahead and clone it and now this is a great way now that i have it here for me to see how a more complicated action has been built uh, and the code for this is a little bit more complicated than a traditional api request because in order to get this mid-journey integration to work you have to um, both make the requests, but then also pull in an ongoing way for the request, which is all a little bit complicated. But another interesting thing is you can see here that I'm telling it to leave some information as a comment. This is another little Easter egg. If you tell it to leave information uh, that is uh, surrounded by these HTML comment tags, which looks like this, uh, the AI will be able to see the information on future generations, but the user will not be shown the information which is super cool because in this case we can store this hash and then on later generations we can tell it to look for and use this hash and we can engage in way more complicated uh, flows of logic um, going across multiple actions by storing data in the chat that the user can't see. We're not troubling them with that. So now I'd like to talk about one super important element that I almost forgot to discuss, which is how the heck do you debug these things when they're not working well? Now, we don't currently have a system that separates out errors and shows them to you, which would be nice. But what we do do is we tell the generating, uh, uh, the generation that occurs after the action concludes any errors that, um, that took place. So let's just do a little example. I'm gonna say like a error action, let's call it. Um, and uh, we're just going to do something like um, something that would cause an error. Like we're going to do print hello. And we need to have quotation marks around this, but we don't. Okay, so I'm going to connect error action. 
and let's run it. Let's say test my action. Anytime you see this circle, it means an action is running. So that's pretty important and useful to know. If you don't see that circle, it means the action didn't even try to run. So here it's telling us, hey, it looks like the error message says that there's a name error because hello is not defined. So this is very helpful. And what I, what I mean to illustrate by this is that if there's an error in the Python, we pipe that error back through the generation. Sometimes it won't automatically tell you what the problem was, but you can say something like test my action and um, if there's an error, print it you know, exactly as it appears, please. So let's try this. And now instead of giving us kind of the summary that it gave us before, it's giving us a more exact representation of the error. So as you guys are debugging these things, this is super useful to know. I know we don't make this super clear, but there you go, it's helpful. So I'd like to show you one more little Easter egg um, and uh, we're gonna provide some more documentation for this in the future and we might have a couple of more of these in the future, but this is something that you probably won't need to use, but just, you know, useful to know. Even if it doesn't say it, you will have always have access to these environment variables that can get the form ID of the form that you're using and the chat ID, which is basically like the unique ID of the conversation that you're using. So you can use these for identifiers within your systems. There might be reasons why you would want to get these. Um, there are other things that we might start to provide in the future that could be useful um, for just identifying these action calls within the context of the Python code that you're running. So you can get these two environment variables, which may be useful within the context of your larger um, function call. So that's it. With all that, I hope that you now have a much better understanding of what you can and can't do within our action system. Um, there's a lot of possibility out there. 